Good morning, everybody. My Good name morning, is Carl Villacoda. And for those who are on the audio line, if you can just mute your speakers, your computer speakers, and that way we, we don't get that reverb effect. Um, but I'm Carl Villacoda. I'm the Communications Director for the Monmouth University Urban Coast Institute, which is located uh, down on the Jersey Shore, about a mile from the beach. You know, the, the area down by Asbury Park, Point Pleasant area. And um, I am the uh, project manager and communications lead for the Mid-Atlantic Ocean Data Portal. Often, I, I find it helpful to put the portal in perspective by showing an image like this, which is just what everybody sees when they go to the beach, put their chair in the sand, put their you know feet in the sand and look out and just get that relaxing view of just Nothing going on, you know, complete calm for miles and miles and miles. But the reality is something different. Uh, the ocean is actually a very busy place, and especially here in the Mid-Atlantic, it's getting busier all the time. Um, we're home to some of the busiest ports in all of the nation. Um, lots of commercial fishing activity, uh, recreational boating. It's basically the nexus for um, uh, the undersea cable industry for communications overseas for, for the country. Um, you've got uh, all kinds of other recreational activities taking place at sea and in the near future, offshore wind. And what the portal does is help you visualize all of these things so you can see how they relate to one another or in some cases how they conflict with one another so that people who are in ocean management roles can make better decisions. So what's on the portal? Currently about 5,000 different map layers organized into 12 categories, what we call themes. We have a, a group of instructional and educational resources to help people get started and engage, and I'll um, walk you through some of those shortly. <clears throat> and we also have some tools for users to share maps and collaborate in groups on projects. The Mid-Atlantic Ocean Data Portal team currently uh, consists of Monmouth University, where I sit, Rutgers University, the Nature Conservancy, and our developer EcoTrust, which is out in Oregon. And we work under the guidance of the Mid-Atlantic Regional Council on the Ocean, or MARCO. MARCO is essentially an office um, that was uh, started by the five mid-Atlantic states who we would consider from New York down through Virginia to work together on ocean issues. Um, and currently, the chair is New York State. Now, there are other portals. There's a federal level portal called the Marine Cadaster, which some of you may be familiar with. Um, there is a portal just like ours that covers the New England area run by EDROC. And some of the uh, states in our region have their own portals. And one thing that the Mid-Atlantic Regional uh, Ocean Data Portal did was take uh, some of the, the most relevant information from all of these sites and many other government agencies and house them under this one roof so that they're, they're just easily accessible and usable um, by people who are concerned with things going on in the mid-Atlantic uh, ocean and coast. And so, you know, with the Marine Cadaster, um, we take a lot of important baseline data layers, but we don't take everything. Um, again, just the stuff that uh, really most concerns users in our region. We don't need their data about Hawaiian rails or anything like that. Um, and the same thing with um, Ed Rock and the, the um, Northeast Portal. We work very closely with them on all things and have developed a lot of big data sets uh, in partnership together. And um, we do ingest, in some cases, some data sets from the states. And they take um, a lot of our data and make use of it as well. A couple of quick examples of how the portal is used. Certainly, we're seeing it more and more used um, to help inform certain discussions on offshore wind, um, you know, both from the industry standpoint and from the public's in, in terms of um, helping uh, 
you know, submit public comments on things and learn more about it. The submarine cable industry, which I mentioned briefly before, um, there, there's just so much going on here historically, and especially in, in New Jersey and um, New York area and those shores. But we've seen it expand in recent years. Um, for example, down in Virginia Beach, for the first time, they built um, some cables. Microsoft and um, Facebook teamed up on essentially the, the highest capacity fiber optic cable line uh, ever that crossed from Virginia Beach over to Bilbao, Spain. And they used the portal to help route that. And you can see down in Virginia Beach, major um, naval hub, lots of exercises going on, some old historic munitions dumps off, off the shore, and, and um, you've also got bottom tending fishing gear activity out there. And so they used the portal to help um, design a route that would avoid all of these things as safe as possible, because um, certainly any damage to an undersea cable is a difficult and expensive thing to repair. Um, We've seen, and it's a very cool and happy story, up in my area, down in, you know, in, in the New York, New Jersey area, um, the resurgence of humpback whales off our coast in the last eight, nine years. Um, and as, as happy as we are to see that, um, there's also some issues that come with that. It's, you know, the, the shipping lanes there are so busy, and it, it's basically like seeing children play in the middle of a very busy highway. And so um, there are some groups who have done some studies on um, the areas that could show the highest uh, chances of conflict and have done some public information um, and um, outreach around that. And we're seeing it used more and more just for educational purposes as a, as a classroom tool, both in colleges and in middle schools and high schools. And that's been um, a pretty cool thing to see. And um, some of the tools that we have on the portal, we have changed and um, tailored a little bit to make it um, easier for those kinds of users. So with that, I'm going to now open the portal. And I welcome all of you guys to open the portal on your own, too, so you can follow along. And I left the link in the chat box, that's portal.midatlanticocean.org. So this is the home page for the portal. And what you see here are this uh, automatic carousel, which basically will point you to some of the newest, latest things that we have um, featured on the portal. Um, and to get to our mapping application, which we call Marine Planner, you can either click up there on that map icon, or scrolling down, view maps in that cell right there, you can get straight to it. Before I do that, I just wanted to call your attention to a couple of other things. Under the news dropdown, this blog, this is a great place if you are um, a frequent portal user or even an occasional one and you just want to keep up to date on what the newest stuff that we have um, is. And basically any time that we have a major new data release, or a new tool or anything like that, we'll put an announcement here about it. And um, you know, you can click on it. It'll tell you, it'll, it'll give you links directly to these things, give you a little bit of instruction on it, um, tell you some background about where it came from and that kind of thing. So this is, for example, another place that um, I'll put this webinar recording afterwards so that uh, other people can use it. Um, Ocean Stories, this is a pretty neat thing. It is what I would describe as our own homemade um, story map meets digital magazine platform. And um, you can click on any of them. Here's a recent one we did where um, Marco partially funded an, an explorer to take a look at uh, coral reefs and other life in the um, some of the lesser explored canyons off the mid-Atlantic coast. And as you scroll down, you see this map uh, strip up there. And you can read the story and watch it change from place to place. And essentially what's happening is 
um, the map will help tell the story, and the story will help tell the map, or uh, help explain what you're seeing in the map. So these are a good um, educational feature, especially um, a way to engage um, certain industries and, and explain you know, some things going on in the Atlantic Ocean. We have a calendar here where uh, you know, you know, for, for this webinar is um, any kind of events, conferences, webinars going on that are of interest to people who um, use the portal. And you can always email portal at midatlanticocean.org if you have any suggestions for um, events that should be posted on there. We welcome that. Um, under data, the data catalog, uh, this has the full list of all of our data, um, links that uh, you can use to download stuff. I'll show you another way um, to get there straight from the data layers in a little bit. Um, Groups. I'll show you how to use this tool in a little while, but um, this is something where if you and your coworkers say wanted to start just one little um, group there where you can share all of the maps you've created and, and saved. Um, that way you don't have to keep um, emailing around 100 links. Just a, an easy way to keep track of things and work together. And finally, help um, using the portal. There may be some things that I covered today that, you know, an hour from now you forget all about and say, how, how did he do that again? And you'll find all of that stuff here. Um, short videos, diagrams, those kinds of things you can all um, find right there. So with that, I'll head to Marine Planner. So here it is. Um, when you click there, you, you, the first thing you see by default is this ocean base map. And on the left, here are those dozen themes that I talked about earlier, the different um, classes of data. And um, this is very easy. So administrative, just alphabetically, is the first one, essentially government boundaries. You click on that, and you get this drop down of all these different options. And for you know anything, um, all you have to do is just click on the circle to turn on one or as many combinations of maps as you like. And once you've done that, you can click here for a legend and see all the, the different um, uh, data descriptions. And you can go to this active tab to essentially manipulate what you, what you see here. Um, so for example, um, you can click this button to mute temporarily anything or the X to, to uh, get rid of it altogether. Um, there are options to, um, you know, you can slide one up to the very top if you want something to be more prominent, or take this toggle tool in the middle to make it darker or lighter. Certainly helpful as you have, um, you know, more than one layer on there and you're trying to make a, a clearer map. Um, with any layer, this little green eye icon to the left, you can click that. That's for information. And you'll get this drop down with uh, four or five lines of quick text that give you um, a start description of what you're seeing. You can always click read more to get the fuller description. And that tells you, you know, the whole story behind it, um, where it comes from, additional notes and uh, links to download the data. We view ourselves as a public information effort and want to, to the best of our ability, make anything that we have on the portal um, downloadable so that if you have your own mapping software in the office, um, you can take it, use it yourself. Um, there are a few exceptions out there. For example, um, some of our phishing stuff where uh, there's some privacy concerns from um, the federal government uh, that we had to um, um, solve by essentially not making that downloadable. But most of the stuff we have, you can get yourself. Metadata links, um, a link to the source of it, and tiles. This is um, a, a, direct, a direct link to the service and layer ID information, which is another way to um, ingest it. 
in your own software if you're using it. So back to the portal. I'm just going to click all of this stuff out and move on and show you more of what we've got. And I'll do this for a few minutes. I'm going to walk through um, some of the tools we have and you know, open it up to um, questions and comments. But certainly, if there's anything um, you see that um, you, you'd like me to stop and explain on the spot, I'm, I'm happy to do that. We have a small group and um, can keep this pretty informal. So fishing, artificial reefs right there is one of our most um, frequently clicked uh, layers on the portal. You can click on any of these shapes for a pop-up telling you uh, what they are. Now we have basically two main splits of our fishing data, our commercial fishing data, VMS and VTR. VMS, Vessel Monitoring System, is kind of like um, an easy pass system where you know the the, the uh, transponder clicks or uh, pings the um, infrastructure every few minutes and says where the vessel is. So these are by catch type. So for example, for scallop 2015 and 2016, you click there. I'll zoom out a little bit to get the full regional view. And we we have um, two versions of all of these. So you've got you know, the full view of all traffic, 2015 and, and 16 in this case. And then we also have versions, scrolling down back, for um, less than five knots in this case, slow traffic only. The uh, point here being um, this map is really intended to more accurately show where um, fishing activity is happening, where the other one shows transit. You can see these clear lines coming spread out of the ports um, to their destinations, where you do the slower traffic one, and um, it, for the most part, cuts out a lot of that, except for you know where ships may be idling in port and, and that kind of thing. Um, under this, we also have the VTR, Vessel Trip Report information, which is uh, filed by fishermen. And um, for these, we have five-year groups for different gear types. Um, so I showed scallop. Something like that would be captured in dredge, along with um, surf clam and, and some other um, different fishing types. So for these, click on it. Um, let me darken that a little bit to make it a little more colorful. Oh, I hit the ports. And we also refer to this as our communities of sea data. Reason being, you click on the map and get a pop-up for any of these areas, and it will um, tell you which communities depended on that area at sea for that particular time. So 2011, 15, you can see some of the big spots. Um, and it, it's pretty cool to see this because you can see the, the you know, interstate nature of what's going on out there. You've got in this one spot, basically off the Jersey Shore, you've got New Jersey, Massachusetts, New York, Virginia fishermen, Connecticut, and so on and so forth. And that can be a pretty important thing if, say, you are working in a government role or something like that, and you're, if you're trying to do public outreach um, for one of these areas and want to, you know, find out who, you know, which ports are coming in and out of these places so that you can contact them. Um, another interesting thing with this layer, they, it has a companion here layer that you can click on for any of these ports that will just give you some economic kind of in information about them. Um, so for that particular gear type in those years, you'll find um, that Point Pleasant accounted for nearly 10% of the regional total, um, the total fisher days there. Um, fisher days as a percent percentage of regional total, total trips. Um, so not another way to get kind of a, um, an indication of the economic importance of any of these areas. We also have different management areas and, and other stuff like that in that 
um, catalog. So the fishing communities at sea by port data, um, this is taking that VTR data, but just cutting it up so that you can see um, by port. So let me, for example, click on um, what I showed you before, which was, I believe, dredge 2011 through 15. So let's say you were interested in only looking at where the Point Pleasant guys went in that period. A little bit of a, a search widget for this. Um, I, I told you before about how we had 5,000 different layers. It would be completely unwieldy to have a drop down with that much stuff. So for some of these bigger data sets, we just create this widget here. And so if you typed the first few letters, you see some options. And right there, within those lines, you see where 90% of the fishing effort by that port was spent for that same year span. And so any of these ports that you see here um, from that period will be represented and you can search them. Um, and I'm showing the Mid-Atlantic here, but that extends all the way up the coast into um, New England and down as far south as uh, the Carolinas. So I'll close out of that and scroll down into our marine life data. And um, it's kind of a similar split that we have to the fishing and the, uh, the biport stuff. We have marine life, you know, the main catalog here, which has um, marine life by groups, and then marine life, which is species specific. And um, I'll show you that. That's another search widget to help um, make it a little less uh, unwieldy for uh, searching a whole lot of stuff, particularly as regards our um, birds, our fish data, and our marine mammals. So for example, um, for these marine mammals, you might be interested in looking at um, abundance of baleen whales for you know, basically the average for the whole year. But you might also be interested in viewing only um, humpbacks. So you can come here and find just that uh, species. Again, just talk, once you've typed in two or three letters, you start seeing some options. So for that, we show by month. Um, it is September. So let me mute the main one, and you'd see that. You can see in September, oh, scrolling out, humpbacks are still largely up in that Gulf of Maine area, they're, they're, but they're heading down. And if you were to look at um, the colder months, you'd probably see them inching down toward the Carolinas and further down as they migrate uh, south for the winter. Um, maritime, essentially a lot of human use data, ports, um, that kind of thing. Um, some of the most important data sets that we have in here are the AIS automatic um, identification system, kind of like the, the uh, VMS fishing that I showed you before, where they're electronically tracked to each um, large ship, I think. Um, 65 feet or larger, but I, I, I could be mistaken on that. You can look at these from a few different ways. All vessel tra tra uh, transit counts for the year 2019, and I think we have we go back to 2011 on this. And for any of these, you can see some pretty clear um, patterns out there. Or you can look for just different kinds of vessel types, so cargo, um, fishing vessels that have them. Um, other, there are some categories that don't fit neatly into the ones that we have. Um, for example, um, Monmouth University has a couple research vessels which would be tracked in this. Um, some other things like that. Um, passenger vessels, so you're talking cruise liners, ferries, tug and tow, a couple of other different options. Um, now that is the average for the full year, 
but we also allow you to look monthly. So if you click here on this monthly data slider, it'll activate this button, which you can click. So there's two things you can do here. You can um, toggle through um, the type of vessel that you're interested in. So let's say um, pleasure boat sailing, and you can toggle through the month manually, or you can click here to animate it. And it's kind of neat where you see the, the seasonal variation for something like that, where it's very, very busy um, during the summer months, and now you're into the fall, you're into the winter, and it basically goes dead. Um, certain vessel types are uh, more impacted by that than others. And um, yeah, like we have those sliders from the last couple of years, and we also have um, annual data for um, some of the older years, 2013, 12, 11. Um, there's a lot of different um, data here for stuff like ports, um, ongoing, you know, the current uh, Coast Guard proposed areas and studies, we have this drop down. Um, these are studies that are currently underway. For example, um, the port access route studies for the Mid-Atlantic that are currently underway. Um, I think there's four of them currently, or five, or four. So right now, the latest of these is the Northern New York Light Study Area, New Jersey, um, the Chesapeake Bay approaches, the Cape Fear, North Carolina coast. And there's also another big one um, underway with potential fairways that you can look at. essentially um, areas that would be uh, protected as cut-through routes for any offshore wind areas and, and um, things like that. I'll mute that, move down. Oceanography. So um, basically anything having to do with the ocean, uh, things going on at sea from a physical standpoint. We have bathymetry data, high resolution um, data for um, you know, basically showing the contours at the bottom of the ocean. Uh, some of these are, are pretty neat. You can get lost looking at them. Um, for example, this one out here, which starts out by the shelf break in the canyons. Give that a minute to load. And this is another a pretty good example of one where uh, turning it up a bit really shows you some of the detail um, in these places pretty well. And you can see how those canyons cut through the uh, shelf break. Um, seabed forms just added. We haven't even done an announcement on this. We've added hurricane tracks for this one, the last 116 years, and another one just showing the last 40 years, including a slider. Zoom out here so you can see how things have changed since the 80s. And there's a static map showing all of them. And for that one, you can click on any of the storm tracks uh, for information that will tell you, um, or supposed to, anyway. Uh, I'll have to look at that after the webinar. Uh, oh, that could be stat form. We'll tell you when the storm occurred, um, some information about its history, maximum wind speed, pretty interesting stuff. Um, down under that, we have recreation. Um, a lot of this was done through public outreach and survey efforts. Coastal recreation, we did this one in partnership with the Surf Rider Foundation. <clears throat> so you can click here, um, zoom in for um, this first category, shore-based activities, essentially beach going, places people like to go. You can see the hot spots. Um, you can also do 
surface water activities to where people surf, bodyboarded, um, underwater activities or scuba diving, wildlife and sightseeing. Um, just some ways to get a sense of how uh, the coast is being used recreationally. Um, there were these PGIS ones that were done. Um, basically, we held public workshops to find out where people went for recreational activities at sea. Um, you can click on them for the list of people said of, of what they said they did out there. And a lot of these really line up very closely with uh, where the um, artificial reefs are, if you were to take a quick look at them closely. Renewable energy. So we have a few different things here. Um, let me zoom out here to get the full regional perspective. Planning and lease areas. So we have the full list of the Boeing um, lease areas current. And we have one that we've created ourselves, which basically just takes that same data and we color code it ourselves uh, so that people can see um, you know, who actually owns any of these leases. You can click on any of them for a pop-up that will tell you um, the same or just look at the legend. Quotes out of that. Um, and some other data related to that. Um, some of the uh, New York bike call areas, which are under discussion. Virginia's research uh, lease areas. We have um, essentially some different stages carved out. Offshore energy projects under review. Um, so vineyard wind, South Fork wind up north a bit. Projects that are permitted for the Mid-Atlantic. So um, Virginia is currently um, the only thing that falls under that category. But as time goes on, that will change. And um, offshore energy projects that are operational, currently just Block Island um, up here, off the coast of Rhode Island, not far from Long Island. Um, scrolling down, a couple more different uh, themes. Security, declassified naval data, um, the danger zones and restricted areas are a, a very frequently activated link. So um, basically places that have restrictions for boating or things like that um, to some degree or another, and they're explained there, you can click on them for a pop-up. Socioeconomic data, we have um, some layers that show, that give an indication of the importance of the ocean to local economies. So for this one, um, you can see all the different counties um, and the essentially pound for pound how much they depend on, on the ocean directly for their economy. You can click on them and uh, learn you know, the wages in that county that were directly dependent on the ocean, the number of businesses that were directly dependent, that kind of thing. Um, and finally, water quality, something that we just carved out a couple of weeks ago and we'll be adding to in the uh, coming weeks, um, information about water quality. Um, you know, where uh, in this case, ocean acidification is being monitored. Um, we're gonna have um, impacted streams and water bodies added within the next few days. Um, and some data to help you find out more about that. So now that I've shown, run through the data a little bit, um, and we can talk about this more. I um, just wanted to point out some tools we have. In the top right, there's a print an export button. We have um, for share this map. Uh, you can get a short URL for any map you've created or an embed code if you'd like to um, place a map straight on your website. <clears throat> now, everything I've shown you is free, open to the public, no registration needed. But if you do register, and all you need is just an email basically, um, it does unlock 
few um, tools that uh, you wouldn't have access to otherwise. Um, the linear measurement tool, uh, just click there if you wanted to find out the distance between point A and point B or point C by uh, kilometers, miles, or nautical miles. And this add an arc rest layer tool. So let's say there's some data that's published out there that's not on the portal that you would like to bring into the portal um, to make those kinds of comparisons. You can do that. So for example, marine cadaster, um, let's say there's something like uh, this coastal states layer, which we don't have. As long as you have um, the map service link for it, I'll click here, copy it. You need two things, that link and the layer ID, which is zero right there. Give it a title, I'll call it um, Coastal States Test. Drop the URL in here. The one magic word is um, you have to put in export. Give it the layer ID, zero, submit, and so it's in there. You know what? Uh, down on the bottom right, you can change your base map, but it, it becomes clear if you use a darker base map like that. Um, once you in, in, import these things, um, they can behave just like any other layer. You can go to the active tab and um, change their opacity. Um, you've got the legend data, all of that. So that's, that's a pretty cool thing because you can bring in anything, not even ocean data, if there's land use related data that you want to uh, compare or anything, you have those options. So I've just shown you um, down on the bottom right some different map options um, that can help illustrate certain things. And of course, bottom right, provide feedback. If there are any um, problems on the portal that you want to report, or questions, um, I check that. I'll get back to you right away, I promise. And uh, you know what? I think on that note, uh, I'm going to stop talking and open it up for questions and comments. Um, so if anyone's on the line and wants to just verbalize, please go ahead. Um, otherwise, I can read them in the chat. Hi, Carl. This is Anne-Marie McShay. Thank you so much. That was a great uh, introduction and tour. It's impressive all the way the portal has grown and all the um, capabilities that you've built into it. So thank you and congratulations on that. Thank you. But can you tell me, yeah, can you talk a little bit about, like, you, you mentioned a group um, feature and registration. Mm -hmm. You know, what is the level of confidentiality in, like, in using that, in particular the group feature? That is a great question. Um, currently, groups that you start are public. We are um, right now doing some work on our back end, which we're going to very soon hopefully have options for people to make them um, confidential. And so let me show you how to do that. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm going to go right here. This one, I, I forgot to show some very important stuff here. Um, so for example, I'm just going to make a hypothetical map here. Um, let's say you wanted to show uh, something like um, fishing, a comparison between recreational fishing, so the party and charter boats and you wanted to show artificial reefs and get a view of you know, where those two, how they relate to each other off the coast of New Jersey. You want to crank that up. Um, and you wanted to put the physical map there or something like that. Um, with my planner, which I didn't show, I showed the data tab, the legend tab, and the active. You can save all this stuff by if only if you're logged in and you're a registered user, you can save all of your um, maps and you can create drawings. So in this case, 
I'll, I'll click plus new, give it a name like um, rec fishing and reach for how Tuesday. Um, if you wanted to put a description, some notes about it, um, you know, Harvey boats and the Jersey Shore. You can click add bookmark and now you've got that saved. So for example, now here I am coming in completely cold. Uh, here's the portal, nothing on it. I have a ton of bookmarks here <laughs> and at some point need to um, start getting rid of stuff, but here they all are. And I think I named that uh, what, rec, rec fishing and party boats. You click that and it just automatically um, recreates it. And once you've done that, um, you, can, you can save it in a few ways. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go to create a group so you can see how that's done from starters. So go to groups, um, create your own map group here. So we'll call it um, How Tuesday, uh, intro to the portal. And you can give it a description if you like. You can even give it an image if you like. If not, just a default one will be added in there. Um, so I'll uh, just choose one of those on here. Create group. Uh, a place for nine fifteen participants to share. I'll create it. So essentially what happens here is now I'm a member of this group and anyone who joins would have access to anything that anyone else shares in there. So going back to the Marine Planner, um, I can then go back to that bookmark. and share it. It's giving me a little hard time here. Hang on, let me reload. Sorry about that, guys. That's okay. So, um, so this, is, this is very interesting in terms of the sharing, but um, to what extent is that then confidential to only the members of that group and to no one outside, including maybe even the Marco team? Um, so currently, as I said, anyone who joined the group would have access to um, whatever is shared to it. So really, you know, not very confidential at all at the moment. Um, I mean, it, it would depend on people like actually coming to find it and all of that. Um, but um, very soon we're hoping to create a confidential one that wouldn't be seen by anybody. Um, okay. So I just shared into it and just going back to that, finding our Group, which I believe um, bear with me for a second there we go there it is so you can now see map bookmarks wreck fishing and reefs for how Tuesday is in there so anyone who joined this group would then be able to click on their bookmarks and have um, the data that's in there um, Awesome. So yeah, it's it's not confidential now, but um, people have been asking about that, and, and it's a high priority for us to make that possible. Do you think that will be possible by the end of the year, or do you have any sense of timing on that? It is in our work plan to have done by the end of the year. Yes. Okay. Um, basically, the back end, uh, the, the 
that we used to, to build the portal on um, has an older version that doesn't accommodate it, um, but we're in the process of making that transition and should hopefully complete that soon, and then that will um, open up those kinds of possibilities. Um, I do see uh, a question that was typed in from Laura Mensch. I'm sorry if you already covered this. I was having trouble with the connection. How often is the data updated? That's a great question. Um, all the time, um, I, I think a, a good indicator of it is if you look on the blog and scroll through, you can see um, from the dates that, you know, every month there's at least a couple of different things that are in there. And, you know, for anything that is a service that we ingest from the federal government or um, one of the states or one of our partners or something like that, and they make um, an update on their end, it will automatically come through on ours. Um, but in terms of what we're creating, it, it's, it's a constant process. Uh, we have a portal team meeting today at 2 in which we're going to be discussing things that we have um, in the works that we're trying to get out, you know, in the very near future. Um, so it's, um, it's always happening, and um, we're a, a pretty small group, but we get a lot done. Any other Hi, Carl, questions? Is, or, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Carl, this is Jarrett. Uh, I want to um, again echo the sentiment. Thank you. This is this is pretty great to see, and I'm already having some fun using it on my site. Um, I just had a, a a question on whether or not you can further filter within some of the different data sets that you select. So, for example, if I were to choose the BOEM identified New York flight call area. <coughs> Is there, a, is there a way to select, uh, to, to reduce the number that show up, you know, filter between, say, Hudson North and South or Fairways North and South rather than showing all four, or does it just stay at that total level? So uh, let me uh, activate that one. So you were saying the, the BOEM, um, the New York Pike Hall area is later, is that what you're talking about? And are, are you essentially yes. asking whether it would be possible to get rid of um, some of the, the shapes and keep a couple of the others, that kind of thing? Yeah, essentially, could I hide a call area if I didn't want to be distracted by it through my own ADD? Uh, no, currently, what you see is what you get. Um, okay. That's why, you know, we, we do offer these options that uh, you can download it yourself so that if you were to, if you wanted to just cut out any of that other stuff and make the make them individual layers or, or anything else, um, you can do that. Um, but yeah, currently, no, there, there's no way to, you know, edit what you see on the portal. Okay, no problem. It's still very impressive, and thank you again. Thank you. Let me turn the question to you guys, if I may, and ask, um, have you guys used the portal much? Is this um, the first time you've spent any time on it, or, or have you used it for anything in particular? I'm always curious to hear that. And also, is there anything that you don't see on here or improvements that you would maybe be more inclined to use the portal if we made? This is Jarrett. Again, this is the first time I'm seeing the portal, um, and in terms of what I might like to see on here, I'll, I'll probably play around with it for a bit, and if I come up with anything, I'll, I'll let you know, but I can't think of anything Great. immediately. Yeah, this is Anne-Marie McShay. Um, I am familiar with the portal um, in my prior position um, with uh, New, New Jersey working for state government. You know, we use the portal for, you know, planning and just understanding. So, uh, 
it really is you know unique in its ability to integrate a lot of different data sets from different uh, industries and as well as different um, you know uh, natural data so to speak but in terms of you know what more in terms of what features would we be interested to make it more attractive for use it's really from a you know a private perspective um, you know being able to ensure confidentiality would be one and then two as Jarrett mentioned being able to drill down and I guess what he was looking for is kind of to select out of a, an entire data data layer a certain geography or a certain you know set of those data. I mean that would be very um, powerful, of course. But uh, you know I think most people using the um, from the offshore wind community, you know, are looking at specific uh, lease areas and trying to, you know, focus in on that, so. Right, right, and at, at looking at one spot but not the other, um, which is directly relevant to specific work, that's understood. Um, Even if you can, can you limit like a data layer to a specific spot, or do you get the entire region? as soon as you select that data. So uh, do you have an example in mind? Well, like let's just say um, any of the fisheries data, can mm -hmm. you select out both species ports within, you know, New Jersey only and? Aha. Uh -huh. uh, no, it's, it's, you know, the Again, what you see is basically what you get, and you know you can manipulate you the, whole the, the appearance through the active tab in, in terms of making things darker, lighter, um, that kind of thing. But you can't, um, you know, like select a certain area and only have um, data for that area to come up. Not, that's not a current capability supported by the portal, but. Um, We'll see what happens in the future. It, it's it's something people have raised in the past um, to help do analysis of certain areas and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. You can't currently. Um, and I'll okay. say as as far as the um, groups uh, function, I will ask about that today and find out um, if there's any update there, and I can uh, let you know. And for those on here, also to let you know. Um, I'm always happy. We are always happy to um, do, you know, a private webinar if, uh, you know, you and, and you have colleagues who want to take a deep dive into some um, specific data category or for, your, you know, a specific use, that kind of thing. Uh, we're always happy to make that happen. Yeah. I think that's um, wonderful. Thank you so much. We'll probably follow up with you to take you up on that offer. <laughs> Great. All right, and Dave Hughes wrote, yes, I have used it. Very big fan of the measurement feature. It's helped assess distance to and from shore in the past. Very happy with that one. Um, and uh, glad that we um, started that tool. I think about a year ago uh, we debuted that one. Very helpful. Thank you, Dave. So we've got about one minute left till noon. Any other questions? Now, again, welcome you at any time um, to email me. Uh, you, you see that provide feedback button, which is on the bottom right. Or um, if I scroll down here, that email, portal at midatlanticocean.org, um, I get that, so anything that comes through there, I promise I can always respond to it quickly. Um, also, if, if anyone's on Twitter, the portal has its own um, account. Just another way to keep up to date on um, new stuff that we're rolling out. 
Is there a, um, a full list of the databases that you regularly update? Or is, um, do you have to scroll down the list? I mean, is there, you know, some of the data, oh, mm -hmm. that data catalog feature, does that have the full list of data that's regularly updated? Yes, th this is everything. So you've got it split by the different um, themes, and you can see some of them are, um, you know, larger than others. And uh, so you can, say, click on phishing and get this full list here. And you can click on any of these things for a drop down that um, has whatever uh, descriptor information we might have for it, um, all of that stuff, the tiles, the, the data download. Um, a direct link to view it in uh, Marine Planner, that kind of thing. Awesome. Okay. 1201, any final questions? All right, then. With that, I think I'll say um, thank you to everybody for coming today. I, I always love these smaller ones. They're just, you know, good for um, everybody to get something out of, including myself. I always love um, just having that chance to talk to people, um, uh, you know, in, in more detail and find out what they think and how they're using the portal and how we can improve it. Um, but again, thank you for coming out and. Feel free to reach out if you have any follow-up questions uh, about anything. Thanks again. Thanks very much, Carl. Take care. Thank you. Have a great week.